people to live. What's up, fish tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dawson's Fish Tanks. I'm thrilled to be standing next to Heiko over there. We just went, went through our, our both, both have great German last names. But uh, Heiko, uh, a lot of people know who you are uh, and, and know some of the stuff you've yeah, discovered, but I, I'd like to just get like a, a quick overview of kind of who you are and, and some of the stuff, some of the stuff that you're, you're doing and that you have rolling. So give, give me a start. Like, where, how did you start? Discovering species. How many years ago, kind of put me in your seat when you got the ball rolling? Well, when I started, I was eight years old. My mother took me to the jungle in Africa when I was four. What I did with my daughter just last month, we went to the Amazon. She's also four years old. Wow. So she's she there and you're four? Yeah, and she has the name of my mother, Mark Brent, on the floor. Okay. And, uh, I got started in it because it's a family tradition. My grandfather started in 1887 to put actually plants into an aquarium. In 1887? Yeah. At that time, no one had uh, aquarium with plants. So he started. Hey, hold on, hold on here. I'm, I'm going to get us closer here. So you're telling me that in 1887, you're. I'm a history major. I was a history yes. major. In 1887, okay. your, your father put plants in. My grandfather. Your grandfather put yeah. plants in. Yes. I'm sorry, you're not that yes. old. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So in, eight, in 1887, he put plants. What were the plants? There were actually plants from Europe, mainly from northern Italy, Lake Garda, okay. and also southern Germany. Some lakes and rivers have wow. plants. Where in Germany Nymphaeus, are you originally from? Frankfurt. Frankfurt, Frankfurt okay. Germany. And by the year 1900, he had 32 greenhouses. 32 it greenhouses? 32. It was the biggest wow. aquarium plant. Uh, cultivation in the world at the time and also fish nursery. Wow. He was breeding fishes like zebra, uh, Daniel zebra, like all of these fishes at that time available on the market. Wow. And then my mother was born into that family and she continued the tradition of the family. And I'm the third generation. I hope my da daughter is going to be the fourth generation. And I so started... You're the third generation young. of them? Yes, yes. Wow. So it's and in so your blood. You don't have yes. a choice. <laughs> if you want so well. well no all right so so this is and then so when did you get I mean because I know you discovered some of my favorite rainbows you were telling me about a plant here so like when did it really begin was serious was it always serious because if your family was into it I guess how, when did it really well I started my own myself after I had finished my studies in Florida in the early 60s and study at the university I worked at goldfish farm in Florida for two years and then I continued on my own. I opened my own aquarium Rio business in 1965. Wow. And then I had for 33 year business uh, selling ornamental fishes all over the world to 86 countries. And I did my expeditions uh, and introduced uh, by now over 6,000 freshwater species. Discovered and rediscovered. Many, wow. many fish I introduced into the hobby were uh, fishes which had scientifically been described but nobody had seen them alive, so I introduced them to the hobby. And since uh, 1997, I do exclusively this and actually write and publish. 1997? 1997, yeah. Well, I do just research on fishes collect and introduce them. And, and, and we, obviously I'm going to say this, for I'm going to speak for, I call them the fish tank people. You took a picture of me with the What's Up Fish Tank People shirts yeah, last year. Yeah. I'm going to speak for all of them. I say we really appreciate like all you've <laughs> done for you the hobby. Much. Because people, because people don't know when they go to a pet store, they don't know yeah, what happened. Exactly. I mean, you go through some yeah. pra crazy places. Like I've, I've done Peru, I'm going to do Peru again mm -hmm. uh, in January. But mm -hmm. so like, what is the, where is the most remote place that you've gone? That's a dumb question because they're all remote, but. <laughs> Because every single year I do up to 10 expeditions. Oh, well then. Sometimes even more. And only to places where no one else has been before. So everyone is a remote. Uh, just in this September, I went into uh, the last affluent of the Amazon River, which I had not done. It's called Jandia Tuba. And we'll be in my new magazine uh, coming out January, February. Okay. Discus Book uh, 5. Discus so, Book 5? Yeah, I do a yearly edition of this magazine okay. to update my other books. Okay. Discus Volume 1 and Volume 2. Okay. And uh, I went into a river system again, no one ever went before. Did 2,400 kilometers on river 
boat to reach this area. But I found another 20 to 25 new species. Wow. This was just this September. Okay, so I want to I want to talk about your book. Uh, I want you to grab your books. I know you got a new book coming okay. out. Please please grab yeah. that and show it. And and this 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 comes with the caveat because we're we're going. How many books do I need to sell to come with you on one of these trips? I guess is the question I would. <laughs> okay, ten sounds good. Um, all right, so yeah. give me give us give us a story, Michael. What do you got? This is a book uh, I've been working on for the last ten years. Wow. It's a compilation of. Um, Look at this, folks. Of aquatic habitats from around the world and uh, from every continent, and I show in this book uh, not only underwater biotopes worldwide, but I show from every country, 50 countries. Wow. I show how to reach the country, a little bit of my history and the people uh, I know very well. It goes back to the early days of wow. my collecting. That's awesome. It man. shows the destruction of the aquatic habitats from all over the world. Yeah and it shows how it all wow. started and then i go into continent by continent like here in africa each one of the red spots is several expeditions i made to these areas that's and I, so nice and i show each one of the areas i show what lives in this particular biotope the fishes that live right, here right. and uh, each species and also the plants i show the fishes living like in this biotope and then i show how to do this in a Look at you. The so it's a complete yeah, story the of this area. Wow. And how to do it correctly in aquarium, biotope correct. Yeah. And what you can and get out of it. that's what you told me last year, is promote yes. the biotopes. That yes. makes a lot of sense. Exactly. And this goes throughout. Now this wow. is all Africa. That's a beautiful book. And then uh, for after Africa, it goes to uh, the yellow is uh, location map. Right, right. You see here, this is Asia. Uh -huh. So it shows the places in Asia. And here again, really want to go. and each one with GPS wow. data. No? You have GPS data the in there. In each habitat, GPS data. Wow. There's more. So than you could just go on your GPS. own. And, wow. Yes. Yes. And then uh, after. That is so amazing, man. That's so in depth. Like after, I mean, there's a lot yeah. of great books out there, but yeah. that's. There's nothing has been done. You've been like working this on this for ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Then wow. you go to Australasia. Yeah. So Australia and New Guinea mainly. And you see the habitats there and the expeditions, past and present. And then after um, Australasia, you have the habitats of uh, Central America, North America. Wow, look at talking about right? yeah. Canada in here is... Uh, yeah, we... Yeah, you see We here. get it, man. Wow. Location map on Central America and habitats. And fishes. And so you're giving up. Uh, so is our, be honest, are yes. all, are, you got a lot of GPS points. Do you, have any, any, you, didn't, you didn't keep any back? You don't have any favorite spots you're hiding for people or anything? No. Maybe a few? No, all right. Not hiding. No, this that's is awesome. North America. Right. At least two spots. One yeah. in Canada, one in the US. And I wow. show the habitats there. And naturally also those, how to do in aquarium. This is Canada. Wow. Canada. Thames River habitat. So cool. And ah, then you go to go. South America. And this yeah. is actually most of it. Because wow. most of the aquarium right, fish right, come right. from there. So I did an abstract of a few expeditions in South America, and I show oh, you, man. show here again uh, the habitat so destruction cool. of yeah, the area. Yeah, no, Brazil is getting crushed right yes. now. How do you yeah. feel about what's going on in Brazil? Really? I know it's does it it's, kill you? <laughs> yeah. Internally, yes, it's yeah. really terrible. So this is uh, all wow. together is uh, 2,500 fishes in here. And where can people plants. get this book, Heiko? Well, they can get it on my website. And what is your website? It's www.aquapress. Okay. Line in the middle and my last name, Blair.com. Very okay. easy. But if you go on Google and put in Heiko Blair, there's only one in the world with this name. Good on it will be always on the first ditch beautiful, of Google. Beautiful, beautiful. It's very well, easy. I mean, I, it, it's such story. an honor to talk to somebody that, that has seen, found, and then and now is making it as accessible to people to do that yes. too. That's, I mean, that's that's taking it a step further. So I really appreciate it. People are going to go nuts on this video. I'm going to send you okay. a link because it's going it's okay. to be really fun. Please. So thank you so much. On the website. Thank oh, you. be up there for sure. Great have talking a, to you. Have a great aquatic experience. Ah, you're making it thank better you. already. Thanks, Heiko. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.